Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're in Utah and guests of Falcon's Ledge Lodge. I've been looking forward to coming here as I get to go back to my roots as a trout fisherman. We'll be fishing small streams for cutthroats, rainbows, brook trout, and brown trout. Then we'll be fishing some still water ponds that are just teeming with large fish. And then I get to float down the mighty Green River. Come join me on this most excellent adventure. It's gonna be another great one. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Utah Office of Tourism. Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On this week's show, we're guests of Falcon's Ledge Lodge in the state of Utah. This full service and Orvis endorsed lodge is situated on 600 secluded acres of some of the most beautiful country Utah has to offer. With access to seven different trout filled rivers in the area and 15 stillwater ponds, Falcon's Ledge can fulfill most any need you have. Hosting me on this trip is David Danley, manager of Falcon's Ledge. Along with his crew of expert guides, he assures me of a great trip. The first day, David suggested we travel into the mountains and try Yellowstone Creek, a small but very beautiful stream with four different species of trout in it. Joining us is lodge guide Brian Eldridge, an easygoing man that's an incredibly knowledgeable trout fisherman. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, he let that thing go by him. Yeah, like that's... Nine times. Yeah, that's a bunch of times. Now, this, for, for a small stream, this is a really decent fish. Yeah, another rainbow, it looks like. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well, this is a good fish. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Now that, for a small stream, that is a decent fish. Nice little guy. It's all about the experience here. Like I'm probably in one of the more beautiful places I've been in my life. Catching fish like this on dry flies, this is what fly fishing is all about as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Stealth, yeah. it's almost like hunting. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like hunting. Let's, let's get him back beautiful, in for beautiful, beautiful fish. a release. And just let him breathe a little bit. And he'll tell us when he's ready to go. When it's really cold water like this, I like it when they're ready to go soon. Yeah. Because that's cold. Yeah. That was just snow. <laughs> Woo. Cold on the finners. Yeah. <laughs> All right. When fishing a dry fly or a nymph, the best strategy is to fish upstream of yourself. Fish see very well in front and at the sides of themselves, but cannot see very well behind them. Cast upstream, and as the fly drifts closer to you, strip the line in at the same pace the current is flowing. This will ensure that you get a drag-free drift and not allow too much slack in the line. Too much slack in the line would impede your ability to set the hook when needed. That's, that's nice the one, one I was after. He's yeah. a good one too, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice one. Let me get over here. <laughs> good little fight. Yes, sir. Nice brookie. Very Is nice that a brookie? brookie? Yeah, that's a brookie. That's, that's a, a good that's brookie. That's a really good brook. Yeah, that's a good brookie. Very nice. Now that's a decent brookie. That's a good look at that fish. one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, I like this. It's like hunting. You're, you, I've seen the rising fish. He refused me. I went over him four or five times. He refused it. So I gave him a rest. Went on the other side of the run, and then went back to him, and he took it. So let's let's get him back in Beautiful. there. Beautiful. All right. It's a beautiful fish. Beautiful. Look at him <laughs> sitting there. Now, for the small stream enthusiast, this is phenomenal. You got room to cast here, which is nice. It's small streams, which you got to be stealthful. 
you know, you just can't stomp in on it. And there's lots of fish, and they're willing to take dry flies. That's what I like. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's in there probably eating midges right now, but we throw a size, you know, 12 <laughs> PMX well, over him, him, and he comes and eats it. Yeah, he threw him a steak. That's what you did. Exactly. He's, yeah. you slide he's eating that French steak fries right now, and then wants the steak come by, and he'll grab it. Yep. But this is great. This is stealthful. You got to read the water. Uh, fish each side of your of, of your your seam. I uh, fished the, the back eddies especially. That's where I took that fish was in a back eddy. So uh, you got to cover all the water. So, oh, let's try it. Great. Yeah. All right. What I'm doing, I'm having a little trouble controlling my drift here. Now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to get out of the water and I'm going to move a little bit upstream so I can feed the, lot, the, the fly down to them so I can get a drag free drift. Where I'm at now, I get too many currents and it's just pulling my fly right away from them. I got some active fish here, and I don't want to lose them. Oh, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Yeah, ha, ha. That's a good fish, too. That away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. This looks like a big brook. Yeah, that's what I thought. Either thought right, there was quite a the, bit of red on him. The main current. This is a big fish. Yeah, gonna have this to is a good fish. Way. Oh, good fish. Beautiful brookie. Wow. Big brookie. Beautiful, beautiful fish. All right, now that is what I call a fish. All right. <laughs> well done. This is an, oh, and a dry fly. I love it. Look at the belly on this thing. Oh, man. Mountain brook trout. All right. Gotta love it. All right. Yes, sir. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful fish. <laughs> I love brook trout. Just yeah. love them. They're a great fish. <laughs> that's a super brookie. Yeah. For up here, that's a really, We're that's talking a... mountain streams. This is not big waters. The, this does not hold a lot of big fish. No. This is a bug-fed wild brook trout. Yes, absolutely. Oh. They have a short <laughs> growing season up here. Yes. You know, they, don't, they only get to grow for three or four months a year. Really. Absolutely, so, yeah. And then, then you're froze over every other time. Yeah, yeah so that's a, that's a, look at, he swam right back into the net. I don't believe it. <laughs> he swam up between your feet, and I just picked up the net to shake it out, and he was in there. <laughs> can fish for at Falcon's Ledge are rainbow trout, brown trout, brook trout, cutthroat trout, tiger trout. How important to you is pre presentation over the fly choice? It, it really is the most important thing, honestly, especially on a stream like this of the day, there's not any particular hatch. I mean, the fly we're fishing doesn't imitate anything no. really that they eat. It looks like a bug. But if you don't get it presented to them so that it floats like a bug, that's all they do. This is what these fish do. People say, well, how smart can they be? Right. Well, we're not at, they're not asked to figure out quantum physics or do algebra. No. All they no. do is watch how fast food comes by them. And if it looks natural or not. Looks and that's natural, your presentation. they're going to take it. Exactly. That's your presentation. Now, if you're doing all your presentation, you feel your presentation is correct, and you're still not taking fish, that's the time to change your fly. Yep. Yep. Change your flies. If you go through a few flies, you're getting a good presentation. You know, move a little bit. You yep. may be getting a little micro drag that you're not able to see. Absolutely. And if that doesn't work, then move to another spot. Sometimes you get to a fish and he just doesn't want to eat. Maybe he's been stressed by something. Cold front before could be we got there. Yeah, yeah could whatever. Be yeah. So that's it. Presentation much more important than the fly selection. Oh, right there. Yeah. Oh, good fish too. Yeah, nice one. Get him out of the Oh, nice yeah. Woo wee. <laughs> First cast. Well done. First cast, he grabbed the nymph, the copper john that we have, and it looks like another rainbow trout. That might be the biggest one yet. Yeah. Well, this really is a nice. good fish. Got himself wrapped up here. Yeah. Which makes it Whoa. a little easier to get him in. Yeah, that's definitely the <laughs> nicest one so far. Oh, my goodness. Good job. <laughs> that's, that is a good fish in anybody's mind. That is a really nice fish in anybody's mind. Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful Took the nymph this time. That's the second one on the nymph. So I think their feeding habits have gone off a bit. They're going to start taking nymphs now. Yep. All right. Looks now this like is a small stream, so that's oh, buddy, that's here. the part that that gets me. When usually when I fish small streams, they're like little eight inches. Yeah, eight yeah, inches is a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. But this this is a good this is a good fishery. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, we've got a lot of these eight to. 10 inch and then you get it occasionally something like yeah. that. Yeah, we're, we're how many feet up in here? 
We're over 8,000 feet. Here. Yeah, over eight. So this is mountain streams. They're as pretty as anything. Uh, easy wading, uh, although you see me struggling a bit. It's only because I have the wrong boots on for this. I should have felt line boots, but uh, I'm, I'm having a great time. It's like hunting, though. You don't stay in one spot. You work an area over completely, and then you move on to the next area. Yep. Fantastic. There you go. <laughs> on the nymph this time. Yeah. Boy, I'm ha I am having a great time. <laughs> I am having this. This is just fantastic. Ah, the brookie, isn't brookie, it? Yeah, yeah, brookie, yeah, beautiful brookie. Good brookie. Again. A decent Another brookie. Really brookie. Really nice brookie. I mean, a lot of brookies in the high mountains this altitude, you're thinking four inches, you know, yeah. four or five inches. And these guys no. have got a little girth to them. Beautiful. <laughs> just love those blue circles around the red spots. It's just. The setup that we used most on this trip was a floating line to a nine foot tapered leader to a 5X tippet and then the dry fly. We then added eight inches of 5X tippet to the bend of the dry fly hook and then tied a nymph to the other end. This is normally referred to as a dry fly and dropper system. There we go. Yep. Took it right off the front of that rock. Yep. Good one. Woo, Ooh. a jumper. Right where you said he was gonna be, on the other side of that rock. Yep. And this looks like another good fish, it's a rainbow. Yep. Another good rainbow too, yeah, man. Yeah, good rainbow. Now that is a decent fish. Yeah, That's a cut bow, huh? Yeah, this is, yeah, he's you got can a lot see of... the little slash underneath this. He's got a little slash, and he's got, look at how the spots yeah. get bigger as they come back. That's yeah. a Colorado cutthroat. He's got a little bit of rainbow in him, but I would call this one even your cutthroat towards your Grand Slam. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful fish. So you can see there a lot yeah. of bright orange. So he's a very pretty fish. <laughs> We had an incredible morning fishing on Yellowstone. It was lunchtime, and we made our way back to the truck and ate. Brian told me of Rock Creek, which held bigger fish, and would I be interested in fishing there for the afternoon? I eagerly agreed to try it out. In eastern Utah, there's an abundance of um, great trout rivers and streams from high mountain streams with uh, native Colorado cutthroat and wild brook trout to uh, lower elevation rivers with uh, large brown and rainbow trout. And uh, we've built Falcon's Ledge in the center of, of all of these streams and rivers in eastern Utah so that we can easily access them within a short drive. Right on the Falcon's Ledge property, we have eight uh, private still waters and small lakes that we um, carefully manage for trout fishing. So guests at Falcon's Ledge can fish the still waters for a full day or just fish them in the mornings and evenings when they get back from the river. Another species in the area is the Rocky Mountain whitefish. These fish fight exactly the same way as a large brown trout and reside in the same waters. I caught many more of these as the day went on. That? Got him. All right. This Looks might have some bigger. shoulders. Yeah. This is a better fish. Yeah, much better fish. Much better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen him yet? I yeah, have. A little bit. <laughs> oh, little yeah. Bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, on the nymph. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Is it a white yep, fish? It's a whitey. Oh, it's a whitey. It's okay. It's a big whitey. Not messing around with the whiteys here. <laughs> oh, I thought that was a brown trout. That's <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> you just don't know in here. Yeah, it's a good one. 
bottom feeders, but yeah. Yeah. Well. Hey, he fought well. Put a bend on the rod. Oh, I thought for sure that I had the big, big brown. I thought at first it was too when he ran back and forth a little bit. My name's Spencer Higa, one of the guides here at Falcon Sledge. We're gonna go over some of the flies we're gonna use this trip. Black and red coronamids, some of the top lake flies we use. Red copper john, a good searching fly for rivers and lakes. Prince nymph, another good attractor pattern. Higa's SOS is a pattern that I created that we use for uh, mayfly hatches uh, before and after the hatches also midges on lakes. Hoppers, uh, yellow's been our top producer this year. Bugmeister, which will imitate hoppers or caddis or stoneflies. Chernobyl ant will imitate cicadas, hoppers, or any large terrestrial. Black ants imitates flying ants that are in this area. The next morning, we visited some of the many stillwater ponds in the area that Falcon's Ledge has exclusive rights to fish. Joining me was Spencer Higa, one of the lodge's top guides. Pretty hard to see. Oh, there you go. Nick got him. Took oh, the dry. yeah, did he ever take it? Took nice, eh? Very nice fish. I was just about to say, it's kind of hard to see, <laughs> but I think I better get him on the reel. Okay, we'll just kind of wait till he's ready, because he's going to. He's gonna figure out he's hooked here in a second. Yep. Gotta get him up, get his head up out of that weed cover. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad, getting him out of the weeds there. Oh, now he's just figured out. He sees you. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get in there. There we go. Good man. Oh, heavy fish. Good. Good fish. Yes, sir. Now. That's a little more like it, huh? Still water action here, large fish. Would this be on the average? Yeah, yeah, that's about yeah, on average. On the average there. for the pond here. Yep. And away he goes. <laughs> <laughs> now these fish, they're still spunky when they leave. Yeah, yeah. Now that was exciting. Now I was just about to pick it up again and he took the hopper right out of the water and took it. That's, that's exciting, I like that kind of fishing. Yeah, that's fun. Oh yeah, when you get dry fly fishing like that, like I said, we're running a two-fly rig. We've got a hopper on top and running a midge or a coronamid underneath it. It took the hopper, which, which is exciting to me. Oh, this is great. Try that again. Let's do it again. Yeah. The lodge at Falcon's Ledge is a unique structure handsomely set in a private 600-acre canyon, providing a bird's-eye view of the surrounding still waters and wildlife. The 15,000 square foot lodge was designed specifically to provide the ultimate lodging experience. This is truly a special place. Falcon's Ledge Lodge has been named Orvis Lodge of the Year for 2012, a very distinguished honor. The lodge provides elegant amenities and service while letting you relax as if you were in your own home. While the staff will pamper you, you still have the freedom of helping yourself to a soft drink or a snack in the kitchen at any time. The lodge is Orvis endorsed and has a full service fly shop on the lower level. This includes fly tying vices that you may use at any time to build your favorite pattern. I highly recommend you give Falcon's Ledge Lodge a call for your next fly fishing trip. rivers the lodge provides a service to is the mighty Green River. I've read many a story about the trout here. The water is gin clear and the fishing can be tough at times. We traveled high into the mountains to launch the drift boat. The temperature was quite a bit cooler up there and we ran into a snowstorm. The beauty was stunning and I just had to pinch myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. Joining me this day was Garrett Sill, another one of the very experienced guides Falcon's Ledge has to offer. Oh, this is a good fish too. 
<laughs> you gotta love beautiful. it when you see them take. Oh yeah. Well, he's staying down too. Yeah, that's all right. We got we got plenty of plenty of space. <laughs> Good fish. Good fish. Oh, Look at how he's got this rod bent right over. <laughs> nice brown. Big brown. Well, I won't say huge, but he's big no, enough. No. Wow. <laughs> nice job. Oh, man. Good job. Man. Do you want a still picture with us? Come on, buddy. And away he goes. Nice job. <sighs> that was fantastic. I seen the fish slowly come up when I said, take it. I seen his mouth open and he actually engulfed the fly. You don't see that very often. No. That is something else. Oh my. Yes, sir, on the dry fly. Changing back to that Chernobyl <laughs> certainly worked. That's my favorite fly. Yeah. I'm telling you. Now, could you have made conditions any worse for me? <laughs> We've had snow, rain, sleet, and it looks like it's snowing again. Pretty colors on it, pretty yeah. fall colors. Yes, sir. That is a beautiful brown. Nice fall colors, <laughs> good golden brown. Right. True. And away he goes. Nice shot, Ben. <laughs> Good shot. The snow continued and the fish kept rising, but we've run out of time for today. For more information on this show and others in our informative series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get all of our weekly uploads. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Utah Office of Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.